This one you can't read, but um, he's trying to take one graph and put all of the things that make uh, you die from eating meat. Um, and I just want to pick on a, a couple. One of them I talked about already, uh, which is TMAO. But the other one that I think now is probably in first place uh, statistically would be heme iron. Now, this article talks about uh, in the NIH study, uh, WARP health study, well, they're talking about heme iron, uh, nitrates and nitrites. Those two you'll recognize, those are components of processed red meat. They make the really dying, decaying flesh look bright and attractive to some people, okay? But the, it's the heme iron um, that is probably even more concerning. That is, people are told you must eat meat so that you have enough iron. Well, that iron happens to be toxic. It actually uh, will, heme iron, produces what's called reactive oxygen species. Not true if you're getting it from a vegetable source. Um, that uh, is probably responsible for all of the correlations between high iron in the bloodstream and heart attack, which we found from Finland, you know, 30 years, 30, 40 years ago. And so, yeah, the people with the highest level of iron double the heart attack rate. So the mechanism that's been discovered is that those reactive oxygen species make plaques and then upset the, um, the macrophages inside the plaques so that they are more likely to have a, become a vulnerable plaque and have a heart attack occur. Now, um, as I'm closing, I, I, I want to really talk about some of the social aspects and you know, how this really, we need to crowdsource this. I'm glad you're here. Hopefully you'll talk about this with all your friends. You become an ambassador for plant-based nutrition and for health. All right, fantastic. Um, uh, I took this one personally. A lot of you heard about this, but um, uh, the president of HA, <coughs> HA became a, a friend of mine during uh, about six weeks before this. We were, I was on my last ACC presidential team trip. Um, and we were, I was, we were sitting having sort of a impromptu presidential dinner. I got one of my best friends happens to be president of the European Society of Cardiology right now. And then we had the past president of the AHA, and then I had the current president. And these two guys are eating seafood. I'm eating tofu, okay? And he's eating a steak. And I'm saying, you know, you heard my lecture. Did I stutter? Well, I mean, you're eating this. And he's, he said, you know, I'm from Texas. This is what we do. I have bad family history, but, you know, we're, I'm taking my statin. So six weeks later, he, at the, the, I, I know what it is. I know what it's like. I did been there at the American College of Cardiology, speaking in front of 5,000 people, trying to get your message across, trying to get a message that they're not familiar with in terms of prevention. Um, and so I know how you get amped up for it. Uh, and there he was, giving the opening address, and he had a heart attack. And so everyone's all over this, you know, heart attack at the American Heart Association with the president and all this stuff, and not thinking that the real issue is that we just don't know. We don't know all this stuff. Nobody's paying attention to it, and we need to do a much better job of getting the word out. Um, I feel like this is where we were. We were here in the 1950s. This was a physician. They were talking about his lifestyle and all, all these things. And, and, and what are they doing? More doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette, OK? That's what we were doing in the 1940s and 50s. And then enough research. Was it, is it 450 articles per year about meat? What does it take to, in this case, get the Surgeon General in 1964 to say, we're putting a warning label? That had a tremendous impact. And then you have places like New York who says you're not going to smoke in public places. And then that spread to Chicago and other places, and the heart attack rate drops. Okay? So we need to put a warning label on every animal uh, that is produced. Okay. So I like to brag about Rush University. Uh, it's a beautiful hospital, by the way. And the 12.75 is the number of vegan cardiologists that I have. And we joke about the, what's the 0.75? It's one of my interventionalists who says he's vegan until 6 p.m. OK, fine. That's bad. You can see from the data, that's better than nothing. Um, and we actually have published about the attitudes. And it's very progressive at Rush. Uh, and the, the number of people who said they would never recommend plant-based nutrition uh, to their patients is down to, what is that, about 17%. About the rest of the people would at least consider it um, because we, they know that there's something behind it. We're not just kidding. 
Um, so in summary, we really do have this issue with mortality in the United States. Our diet, exercise, lifestyle choices resulting in the diabetes, the uh, obesity epidemic. We are losing this battle despite of all, all of our fancy uh, drugs and, and devices to try to keep people alive with heart disease. It's the animal products, particularly processed red meat, but really all animal products, and then sugar um, and refined carbohydrates that are resulting in the heart attack, stroke, and death. And so we can actually make a difference. Um, we, can, uh, we can continue to treat drugs, uh, continue to have this multi-billion dollar, trillion dollar uh, health care um, system that is really a sick care system, as I said before. Uh, but I'm really trying to get you to get everyone behind this, to save the money, save the health, save the family, save the friends, and it's your patriotic duty, <laughs> okay? Save your country. Uh, I do feel like we've, we've made progress um, because we're getting a lot of opposition these days. When I first started giving these talks, uh, it, we were getting a lot of ridicule. And that's actually why I brought up the Schopenhauer quote, because of the ridicule that we were getting, you know. And now I think we really are getting some violent opposition we have. Uh, uh, so we're, that's progress. And, uh, but, and pretty soon everyone's going to say, are you kidding? We're not going to smoke. Uh, we're not going to eat animals. Uh, we're not going to have trans fats, I mean, just because it doesn't make any sense. I'm going to wear my seatbelt, I'm going to do a vegetarian diet and exercise every day. It's just simple, there's simple things that we can do to improve our outcomes. And so with that, I want to thank you very much for your attention. And we'll <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Really, really appreciate that.